So maybe you've been considering purchasing a small power station. You've done your needs assessment and you've determined you don't need all that much capacity. So you started looking at what was available and you discovered that the well-known brands can be a little on the expensive side. At the same time, the budget brands, well, you're not quite sure they're such a good investment after all. What are you going to do? Well, Anchor Solix has come up with a solution you may want to consider. This is their C300 DC only power station. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I do want to thank Anchor Solix for reaching out and offering to send me the C300 so that I could share it with you. So I've had this unit in my possession now for about two months and I was unable to do a lot of the testing I normally do with power stations because, well, it doesn't have an AC inverter. So I had to look around for things that were DC only and I found a few, a few unique ones that I hadn't tested other units with before. I'll talk more about my testing when we get to the point where I share my experiences with you. Now what I thought I would do is just lower the camera to the tabletop, go over all the key features as well as the physical and performance uh, specifications for this unit, then I'll share those experiences. Now before we focus in on the unit itself, let me just take a moment to share what else it came with. So it did come with two pieces of literature. First there is the operating manual and the warranty information. Now it came with one other item which is this USB type C to USB type C fast charge cable and I want to point out that this cable is rated at 140 watts transmission. I'll explain why that's important in a moment. All right let's bring the unit back into the picture. Now as far as key features for this unit one of the things that makes it stand out especially for such a small compact unit is that it has seven output ports and it's again it's important to understand that these are all DC powered outputs. There are no AC powered outputs on this at all. It does not have an AC inverter, but I will speak to that as well in a moment. It is also Bluetooth controllable with an app you download to your cell phone. It has a retractable area light, very different and actually very functional as I'll share. And it does have a full three year warranty. Now, as far as the physical specifications for this unit, even though it is quite, comp or quite compact, it still does have a bit of weight. It comes in at six pounds, five ounces. So yeah, a bit of weight, but not bad compared with other units of its size. Now, as far as the physical dimensions go, it stands 7.9 inches in height, 4.9 inches in this dimension and 4.7 inches in this dimension and it does make use of the better lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now just before I go through the performance specifications for the C300 there is one more feature that I want to share with you and that is it has a nylon carrying strap. You know compact lightweight gets out of the way but this strap has another unique feature in that there are two rings right at the base, right down here, that will allow you to take another strap, a shoulder strap with hooks on it, that you can hook to the unit and carry it over your shoulders. In fact, Anchor Solix does sell a optional strap if you want to do that with it. Why would you want to carry it over your shoulder? Well, I guess if you're going a short distance with this unit, because this is something you could carry reasonably well, not for long distances, but for you know reasonable distances, it might give you a hands-free option to carry it over your shoulder. All right, let's go into the performance specifications for it. So it has a capacity of 280 eight watt hours. So it's not a high capacity unit, but hence the name say 300, but it is comparable with a lot of other units in this size range. In fact, this is probably smaller than 90% of the other 300 watt units on the market today. So its output is up to 300 watts. Now, when I say that, you have to understand that's a combination of any of the outputs, the seven outputs on the front. You can only get up to 300 watts output but reasonably you're not going to be plugging that many items in it at any one time that you need all 300 watts. Now it has an XT60 solar input over here and it maxes out at 100 watts and as I mentioned it has seven output including of course the traditional and still very useful 12 volt auto adapter. It has two, right down here, two 140 watt USB type C input and output ports. I'll mention those again in a moment. It does have 
to other USB Type-C outputs for different wattages, and it has two traditional USB Type-A. Now, as far as the specifics of each of those outputs, I'll put all that in the video description so you can get the technical details there. Now, the reason I mentioned that it has two USB Type-C input-output ports here is because each of those are also input ports, as I mentioned, to a maximum of 140 watts each. So you can charge this unit at up to 280 watts, or you can use one of those units plus the 100 watt solar unit and again max out there. So that would max out at, of course, 100 or 240 watts, not 280, but 240 watts. Now here's the thing about the two input ports. You're going to have to provide the charging unit or units to recharge this device. So I have this one that I purchased myself from Ugreen, and this is a 100 watt unit. I do also have an Anchor Solix 45 watt unit that I uh, use probably mostly to charge my cell phone with, but I have put them in combination on a power bar and run two USB Type-C to USB Type-C charging cables and maxed out at, well, it's just about 145 watts. There's a little bit of a, a difference between the rated output for each of these chargers and what the input is accepting, but it's very, very close. Now, the thing about that is, is that you have to have a cable that is rated for up to 140 watts, and that's what they've included with the unit, is a 140 watt cable. Now, if you only have a 100 watt unit like this, you don't need a 140 watt cable. You just have to have a cable that's rated to the maximum output of whatever your charging unit is. But since you can get up to 140 watts in, if you have a charger like this, what rated for 140 watts, make sure you have a cable able to uh, pass that amount of energy on. All right, as far as the operation for the C300 goes, it starts with turning the unit on. So the on off button is here in the center. It does take about a full four seconds before the screen will light up. It'll show us the status, showing me that I have 93% of the battery capacity left. Now, the first thing I want to do is a demonstration of charging, and I'm going to make this simple today. I'm just going to plug in my cell phone for charging. I'll plug it into one of the USB Type-C cables over here, or ports over here, plug it in on the phone, and immediately it should start showing the output wattage and it's running at about 8, 13 watts. So my phone is charging at 13, 14 watts at this point. This is very difficult to see with the small, small display. That is one thing about the Anchor products is their displays tend to be a little on the small side, but it is very clear and everything that you need to know is there. Now at the same time, I'll show charging the unit. So the unit, I'll be charging it with the included cable, the 140 watt cable. I'll be using my Ugreen power uh, charger here, which has a 100 watt max output. And as I mentioned, the in, two ports on this side are the input ports, so I'll plug it in here. They're, they are input-output ports, and it'll take a minute for the power station to recognize this. I see it's showing 95 watts input on the device itself. Now, I do want to show this. You might see a small flashing light over here. That is the Bluetooth app telling me that it's ready for connecting. So I'll do that with my cell phone now. Turn the phone on. Where is my Anchor app? Turn the app on. And uh, we'll start a screen record. This is something new for me to do here as well. All right, so I'm recording and I will show connecting to the unit. Now the app is showing me everything that the front of the screen is showing me, and this does operate at quite a bit of a distance away from the unit as well, which is nice. So you have some control over the unit itself, both in terms of turning on and off all of the ports and any of the other features, as well as monitoring your battery status. So let's do a quick demonstration of that. I should be able to show turning the car port on, although I have nothing drawing power from that right now. You can see where that is. 
Let's roll the screen up. I can also turn the light on. Now the light has a button for on and off on the unit itself. Let me just extend that. But as for a demonstration, let me turn it on using the app. So there you go. All right, so what I'm showing on screen right now is C3, which is the input port is taking in 96 watts. The output port C1 is sending out 14 watts. And I am running at, let's have another look, 94% capacity. And the unit is running at about 23 degrees Celsius. So as I mentioned when we opened the video up, because the C300 does not have an AC inverter, I couldn't do a lot of the tests I would normally do with a power station. Having said that though, I was able to test a number of DC power devices with it, such as my 12 volt refrigerator. This ran the fridge just fine. Now, mind you, it only has 288 watt hours of capacity capacity, so it's not going to run this for multiple days, but if you're only going on an overnight and all you need is a power for one night, this will do just fine for that purpose. I did the traditional testing of cell phones, cameras, uh, flashlights, tablets, and of course it worked on those. And you can charge more than one of those at the same time. Actually, the seven ports that are available to you, you can charge up to seven uh, different DC operated devices. You just have to remember the max output is going to be 300 watts. But I did have a unique thing that I wanted to test with this and it worked out great. And that was a 12 volt heated blanket normally used in a vehicle. Now, the reason I was testing that out is because I wanted to see how it would work as supplemental heat for winter camping. Now, of course, like a hot tent stove, you're not gonna rely on that to stay warm all night. You still have to have a sleeping bag or sleep system bag and air mattress rated to the temperatures you're expecting. But if you'd like to stay a little warmer, some type of supplemental heat is nice. And a 12 volt blanket is not a bad option. At least I've been testing it and I'll report back on that at a later point. It's This worked just fine for keeping the 12 volt blanket heat, heated and running all night long, in fact, but of course I did turn it off because there's no sense getting overheated by it. All right, so those are my experiences using this battery. What I have found is, of all the power stations that I own, I seem to be grabbing this one most often, likely because of its compact size. It's gotta be the smallest 300 watt power station on the market today. It's the one I seem to find the most uses for. Yes, it does not have an AC inverter, and if that's important to you, then this unit is not gonna be the one you choose. Having said that, they do offer a version, Anchor Solix has, uh, offers a version of this unit with an AC inverter and two outputs. It's gonna be a little larger, and it's gonna cost you a little bit more, but if you need that AC, but you still want the compact nature of a unit like this, well, maybe that's something worth considering as well. All right, that's everything I wanted to share with you about the Anchor Solix C300 DC only version. I'll be putting all the specifications for this as well as the links in the video description in case you're interested. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.